Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Storyblocks and their massive inventory of studio quality stock footage. If you've ever been in need of a quick video clip for B-roll, After Effects templates, or motion backgrounds, Storyblocks has you covered. We've used B-roll from Storyblocks extensively over the past five years. Whether it's a couple walking in Central Park that we didn't have time to capture, or a simple clip that is used as a transition. Storyblocks has been there for us with royalty-free clips, and they can be there for you, too. To sign up for Storyblocks right now, head on over to storyblocks.com fro. First up, DJI is pissed. <laughs> Last week, we reported that the University of Dayton Research Institute published a video showing what would happen if a drone collided with an airplane at high speeds. Well, DJI was none too happy with the researchers at South Harmon Institute of Tech. Ask me about my wiener. All right, it's actually UDRI. DJI has called the video misleading. In an open letter addressed to Kevin Porman, the lead researcher, DJI's legal department called the simulated drone strike staged to create a scenario inconceivable in real life. Is this real life? What DJI is saying is, at the altitudes where that plane would conceivably encounter a phantom drone, it would fly less than half as fast generating less than one-fourth of the collision energy. DJI continues, given UDRI's wide-ranging publicity efforts in print, broadcast, and online media, it seems clear that your misleading video and incendiary blog post seemed designed to generate paid research work for UDRI at the expense of the reputation of drone technology broadly and DJI's products specifically. Oh, shots fired. DJI is demanding that the video be removed and for UDRI to issue a public correction. Will that happen? Maybe. In an effort to cover more Fuji news in the hopes to deflect some haterade, or honestly, bring more of it, which I'm fine with also, bring it on, Fuji lovers, it's fine. I will ask this one question. Will Fuji ever go full frame? Well, according to an interview by DP Review at Photokina, Fujifilm Imaging General Manager Toshayishi Isa, when asked, said this, and I quote, no, never. And there's your answer. Moving on. Jack White of the White Stripes has decided to get into the photography business by opening a studio and lab called Third Man Photo Studios, which I wonder, is it three doors down from something? You will be able to get your C41 black and white film as well as E6 slide film hand processed. Now I personally know for a fact how hard this is and how nerve wracking a job it is because I did it right after college. And I'm happy to say I never ruined anyone's film that wasn't already ruined with crappy wedding photos. Now the pricing does seem pretty reasonable considering not many places hand process film anymore. A roll of color 35 millimeter will set you back seven bucks while a roll of black and white will cost you $10 to process. Now if you wanna get all hipster and shit on people and cross process your film, that will also cost you 10 bucks. The lab is also offering something truly hipster or is it progressive? No, actually it's probably regressive, but who really knows? They have the ability to convert your digital photos into physical negative that can be enlarged into fine art prints. That right there is really stupid. You have a digital file, just print the damn thing and get over it. Stop complicating things, you hipster people. No, Dan, I'm not a hipster. Because my glasses, they're, they're not black rimmed. At the end of the day, I really love this concept. I love the fact that this lab is actually a reality, so nice job, Jack. Maybe you'll come to Philly one day because I heard you actually never played a show in Philly. Now, I do have one more question, though. What's next? Photographers playing guitars? Turn that to 11? Did I mention that we have presets yet? Well, we do. Check them out at fronosphoto.com slash presets. And finally, a story that's only for doctors, lawyers, and husbands or wives of doctors or lawyers looking to spend too much money for a camera. Leica has introduced the M10D, a super expensive, nearly $8,000 camera without a screen. Now, who would ever use a Leica without a screen, you might say? 
You may recall a few years back, Leica introduced the MD, which also didn't have an LCD screen. I probably ranted about how dumb that was, and then I shot with it and actually enjoyed the concept, except I didn't enjoy the price tag that came with the body and lens. Leica says the M10D is a rangefinder with, get this, a digital heart and an analog soul. Kind of like the Tin Man. Because he had a heart. No, if he only had a brain. No, that's the cowardly lion. <laughs> Maybe it's one of the lollipop gills. Follow the yellow brick road. To make it seem more like a film camera, the M10D has something that looks like a film advanced lever, except that all it does is turn into a thumb rest for shooting one-handed. If you would like to review, preview, or change camera settings, you can do that via Leica's Photos app, which probably isn't free like my Gear Vault. The M10D has basically the same specs as the M10, but the M10 is only $7,300 and the N10D is $7,995. So basically you're paying extra money to get rid of the LCD screen. Cool. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix. This time around to check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. That's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.